Hello, my name is Chris McBain. I'm the Manufacturing Technology Manager over here at Go Engineer. I'd like to welcome you to the third part of our three-part series on 3D printing. Today we're going to discuss uh, some of the applications for 3D printing, some of the more advanced things that maybe some of you might not be aware of, some of the capabilities of 3D printing. First, I'd like to go over and review uh, what we covered in the last webcast, so 3D Printing 201. Really what I did is I went through a lot of the different technologies, um, FDM, Polyjet, uh, uh, Selective Laser Sintering, SLS, uh, Z Corp, Multijet, and then SLA. I talked a bit about how these uh, how these technologies work and which one might be the best for you uh, with its pluses and minuses for each of the for each of the different technologies um, you know if they're messy cost of ownership how much load it's going to be for your company to own each one of these machines that uh, that presentation will be posted at goengineer.com if you'd like to go back and review it so let's go ahead and get started so you know I, I I see a ton of 3D printing stuff in the news these days. There's just it's all over the place. And whenever you see something being printed on the news or in the newspaper or in a magazine, it's always something kind of cutesy, something that kind of catches the eye. And you know, I, I mean, I understand this. You know, they want something that's going to interest the reader, or the viewer, and say, "Oh, that's really cute" and stuff like that. But really, I think that it almost does 3D printing a disservice because it is so much more than a, a machine to build trinkets or you know cool little parts or maybe even unmachinable parts but have absolutely no no use in uh, in manufacturing so what i'm going to talk about today is we're going to look on we're going to look beyond these cutesy little parts and we're going to look into some real world applications and how these machines can help you and your business so here are some of the parts, you know, we look at these and, and myself being a machinist and I'm sure you guys engineers, you can look at these and appreciate what goes into these parts as far as design, engineering, things like that. Whereas if this was in a newspaper, you'd be like, oh, that's a monitor, big deal. You know, oh, a drill, they make those all the time. But in order to print these and to get the benefit of 3D printing for these parts, whether they're non-machinable or less expensive to prototype because of your 3D printer or faster design process, this is what I'm really going after with uh, with this presentation, are ways that you can speed up your whole process using 3D printing. So let's talk about some advanced applications. The first one I'm going to talk about is f the, the ability to make functional prototypes with a 3D printer. So Functional prototypes up until this point, depending on what we're talking about, whether it's consumer products or engineering, uh, a beta model, an alpha model, something that goes together, uh, you know, it's very time consuming. You know, most of the time you have to send it to a machine shop or a model shop, you know, have it produced. Um, you know, it's costly. And again, you know, once you do that, you're on their schedule. So, you know, you might wait two weeks, four weeks, six weeks to get some kind of model back to verify or some kind of prototype back to verify your design. By owning the stuff in-house, by owning the 3D printer in-house, you're going to have the capabilities to do that on your own schedule, you know, on your own timeline. It's going to be a lot faster and things like that. So just some of the, some, you know, I'm going to cover three topics for each one of these um, areas for advanced applications and this one we're going to talk about some simulated overmolding which is always kind of a kind of an expensive thing to get prototyped you know you're talking about if you're getting a, a, a silicone mold you know there's there's over molding you got to make two molds uh, you know if you're making an injection mold that's you know tens of thousands of dollars for something that may not feel right or the durometer's not right or it doesn't wrap around enough I mean there's there's a plethora of things that can go wrong uh, living hinges and then we're gonna talk about surrogate parts surrogate parts I don't know if, if many of you are familiar with that but we're gonna cover that it's one of the more interesting applications that I found here at Go Engineer that our customers use 3d printers for so let's talk about simulated over molding so seals or gaskets or if you're doing some kind of dynamic friction like how is this soft part going to flex or interact with other parts you can with the polyjet machine with the object machine you can actually print out two materials in one model so you can see here in the upper right hand corner you know i have a over molded plastic piece the inside is a hard plastic and it's over molded with a rubber like substance it's called the tango line of products for object is the soft material and then the other two you can see are examples of over molding and gaskets and things like that 
um, you know, as you're engineering products, it's always good to know, you know, how is it going to deform? Yeah, sure, you can run through simulation, and it'll give you a really good, especially with SOLIDWORKS simulation, it'll give you a really good idea about the deformation of soft parts, things like that. But really, until you hold it in your hands and test it and make sure that all the screws fit and, you know, it's easy to assemble and it squishes down enough or seals enough, you know, it's really hard to know for sure. So with a 3D printer, you can test that stuff um, in your office. The other thing is living hinges and then flexible and clear parts. This is just an example of the different types of material that you can print with the with the object machine. Uh, you know, the, these you can see the middle one there is, is a kind of weather stripping. It's a seal. Uh, you can imagine getting an extrusion mold made for this to just see, you know, is this going to fall in the right places? Is it going to seal correctly? Um, that bottom part, is it going to clip onto the uh, sheet metal well enough to seal? Um, you know, to, to get a mold of that made would be relatively expensive. Um, here you can just print out a part in a different durometers. Uh, with the polyjet machine, they have a, a bunch of different um, softness. It's not just really soft rubber. You can go through a whole bunch of different flexibility. Uh, you can go through a whole different flexibility scale with the material. And that shows on the left-hand side, you know, if you have a part that has kind of a living hinge or it has to be flexible, you need to pull it apart or it has to hinge on a material and, uh, that's included, a living hinge, and snap and go back and forth and all that other stuff, you can actually test that with, uh, with an object machine. You can print that out, see if that living hinge is going to work and the clip. You know, one of the things when I was in the uh, industrial design field in the model shop, you know, that was always the big trick was, you know, how much interference does a clip need? How much purchase area does a latch need to securely hold a part and, and make it easy to snap on and off? Or maybe you don't want it to be easy to snap on and off. This is a really great way to test it. And then last but not least, obviously, is clear parts. You know, to, to get anything done in clear is, is kind of a pain in the neck. Uh, there's a lot of polishing um, done in a model shop. If you're doing a clear urethane or, you know, if you're machining that out of acrylic, uh, it's it's pretty time consuming. I think you know you definitely pay a premium for clear parts. Where here, you know, you can see on on that picture, there's actually liquid inside, so it's watertight. Um, it's also clear, so you can see through it. So you can check any kinds of flow, liquid flow. You can throw some air through there with some medium in the air to see how the air is going to flow through a part. You know, another really interesting use for this is one of our customers tests pumps, and they actually print out a part of the pump with a clear window on it so they can actually see through the pump to see how that water is circulating through the pump. It's a very interesting uh, application. So now let's talk about surrogate parts. This is something that's really interesting. I was down in Texas at the at an Air Force base and they actually use, they have, a, they have, I think they're up to six or seven 3D printers and they print dummy parts for training. Uh, with the uh, fighter jets, it would be so expensive to order 10, 20, 30 extra flanges, widgets, whatever it is, just for training, ones that are never going to get in the field, or, you know, if it's a subassembly, some kind of motor or compressor or something, um, what they do is they actually print out um, a version of that, a dummy version of that, to give to the students to put on the plane, take off the plane, see you know how they get to it, um, how hard it is to get there. So when they get into the field, they know exactly what it's going to take to change that part out. So whether it's for training or production activities, you know if you're putting something together and um, you want to go out to your manufacturing plant and say, okay, this is how we're going to assemble this part, you can have these kind of dummy parts printed up while your final parts are being machined or molded or cast or whatever, and you can have the manufacturing plant ready to go as soon as those real parts come in because they'll have those those practice parts or those surrogate parts or those dummy parts already on there and uh, have gone through the process of, uh, of assembling it. All right, so next I'm going to talk a little bit about manufacturing tooling. So this is a, a really big thing for FDM. Um, most of the stuff we just talked about with the functional prototypes is a lot of polyjet or objet technology. With manufacturing tooling, this is a, a really big application for FDM. With fused deposition modeling, you're working with real durable thermal plastics, so you're able to make some really durable 
um, parts that are able to sit on in, in a manufacturing environment or on a shop floor and be able to be dinged around a little bit and withstand um, some of the rigors of, the, of a shop. Or a, or a manufacturing place. So what I'm going to talk about today is actually making some molds, some tooling um, out of the technology that we can do with both object or FDM, uh, jigs and fixtures, and then finally some thermal forming or some of you might know it as vacuum forming. So if, with molds, so we can actually 3D print actual injection molds, blow molds, investment castings, roto molds, things like that. Uh, you know, for the injection molds, you know, low temperature, low pressure, and it doesn't have to be super low pressure, but it's, you know, put, to put it in a press and to inject some, uh, some plastic in there, you know, it's, it'll get you enough parts where you can actually test out the mold, make sure that the flow is right, things like that, before getting steel cut for your mold. Um, you know, also with investment castings, you can see that part in the top center of your screen, you know, to machine that part, uh, would take a, a bit of a long time. You know, it would take a little while to to have that part machine, even if it's out of um, a dense foam like a Ren Ren board or aluminum. You know, here you can just print it up, and there you have your your master for your casting. And then you know, over in the left, you can see there's the the uh, 3D printed blow mold for a bottle mold. You know, these are really good applications for just quick turnaround parts. Uh, low volume, you know, with the casting, you know, you could probably use that one over and over again. But, you know, with the with any of the other molds, injection molds, blow molding, things that are under pressure and heat, you know, you can expect to get a, a good amount of, of parts out of it. Now, the amount of parts that you get out of that mold is definitely dependent on the stress that you put that mold under. You know, the, the melting temperature of the thermoplastics, you know, it ranges, it goes up to, you know, around, it hovers around 300 degrees. So, you know, the closer you get to that, the more uh, deformation you're going to get. But for low volume, low pressure, low heat, you know, just to get a part out, just see what it's like, it's going to help you guys out a lot. The next thing I want to talk about was jigs and fixtures. This is another huge application for the Fortis side of 3D printing. You can even do these with the lower end FDM machines, the U-prints, the dimensions, the mojos, but, um, you know, for a real manufacturing environment, I mean, it, this is key to have the ability to make custom tools um, for any kind of manufacturing application. You know, these days, you know, lean manufacturing is such a, uh, such a big, big word, um, you know, to give people the power to be more efficient. You know, this is where it really comes into play. You know, if you had somebody in your manufacturing meeting that said, you know, if I had a wrench that was, you know, three inches longer or wrapped around this part a little bit easier or something, instead of going out and, and, and spending money and, and probably a good amount of money to have these custom tools made, you know, you can print them and, you know, say, hey, does this work? And, you know, if it doesn't, make it a longer or wrap around a little more, or whatever the case may be. Um, also, as far as, you know, fixtures for assembling uh, if you have some kind of an assembly procedure where you have to hold a part steady while you place parts onto it, making some kind of, of jig that does that is a great solution with uh, FDM. And then, you know, last but not least on this one is thermal forming or vacuum forming. FDM naturally ha is porous, uh, just the way that the process um the way that the process lays down the material, there's air holes, uh, very small air holes in the model. This le lends to a really, really great vacuum forming buck, whether it's a male or female buck. It does a really, really good job at, uh, at uh, making bucks for thermal forming. Um, you can see here we can get clear or, you know, multiple bucks, things like that. You know, this is a really good solution for, you know, just quick and easy, um, prototyping for say clamshells um, packaging if you just want to present to a customer hey this is what we're thinking about for packaging for shipping things like that to to be able to print out a buck you know I had a customer that has that's using an FTM machine for this and they're saving about two weeks for every uh, thermal form that they're doing by printing it out the the prototype of it first it's it's pretty amazing all right so we covered functional prototypes and we covered some manufacturing tooling. So next, let's talk about some concept modeling. This kind of goes to the kind of cutesy stuff that I talked about before, um, but this is kind of more of the uh, the, the, the real life uh, applications for those kind of cool models. So, you know, some of the big uses, you know, arch architectural models. So, 
you know, we see these every once in a while, you know, being engineers, maybe we don't see architectural models a lot. Um, I've done a bit of architectural models in the past and, um, you know, they're, they're time consuming because they're very small and I have big hands and it's hard to get all of those, uh, all those little details in there. With 3D printing, you're able to print up, um, whether it's a floor plan or an, uh, a geographic location of where you're planning to build, not to mention the structures themselves. So this is this will save a lot of time, uh, especially with the polyjet technology. You can do clear, you can do colored stuff. Um, there's all kinds of things you can do with uh, with small, very thin walled details for architectural models. Uh, next is ergonomic studies. So everything, you know, the great thing about SolidWorks is it's so easy to design things. You know, the bad thing about SolidWorks is it's so easy to design things. Um, you know, you can design, you know, it'll look great on your computer. It's, it's so easy to put in fillets and radii and, and swoopy shapes inside of SolidWorks and, you know, to modify things, bending, deforming. Um, but really, what is that doing to your final product? You know, how is that going to feel in somebody's hand or when they sit down in that chair? How is that going to feel on their back or, or are the armrests high enough or things like that? This is also really big in the medical industry. You know, if you're designing some kind of tool for a doctor in an operating room, you know, they're probably going to have hands on that tool for it could be hours at a time, you know, doing some kind of, of delicate surgery. You want it to be comfortable. You want to test it. Um, custom tooling is a big one. You can print up a version of your of your handheld, whatever it is, send it to your customer and they can say, you know what, I need this to be a little thicker or a little bit more round or, you know, it's too round. I need a little bit more square, a little bit more boxy, things like that. You can really test it, um, test your models with, uh, with human interaction, which is a really key thing for industrial design. And speaking of design, you know, one of the last ones, and this is probably what you see a lot of on the news and stuff is, is marketing design. So, you know, to walk into a, to a meeting and actually have a physical model to show whether it's a buyer or a customer or an investor to say this is what we're doing this is what you can expect um, from our final product um, something that moves like that that gear on the left you know that's an FDM model to the the projet models or the I'm sorry the polyjet models on the bottom you know they're they're very nice. They're very good presentation pieces. You know, you don't have to rely on the imagination of the people you're presenting to. Uh, that's really nice. You know, they say a picture's worth a thousand words. Well, you know, I mean, I think a model's probably worth probably a million. You know, if you give it to them, there's no questions. They can feel it, touch it. Something that's very tactile about it. So next, let's talk a little bit about end-use parts. So, you know, we talked about the way we can use 3D printing for um, in, in the in kind of what we say upstream in the design process, testing, um, making marketing models, things like that. Um, even manufacturing tooling um, is still, you know, you're not at that end process yet, you know, concept modeling, things like that. What I want to talk about now is actually printing parts that you can use in the field whether it's parts that you send to a customer or parts that um, are part of an assembly, a greater assembly that uh, is included in your final part. Um, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit about aerospace. You know, um, Stratasys has a material called Altem that is approved for in-flight use. Uh, it just doesn't gas or start on fire, things like that. Um, you know, I kind of laugh. I, I might have said this joke in the other podcast, but because when the plane's going, you know, when you're, when you're in trouble in the air, the last thing you want is something smelling bad in the cockpit, I guess. So, but anyway, Ultem is, is certified for that. And I'm going to talk a little bit about bridge tooling, too, and uh, discuss a little bit about what that means and how you can use um, the 3D printing for stuff like that. So aerospace parts. So, you know, some of the, I was uh, lucky enough to uh, go down to NASA in Houston, and I actually saw this. Uh, lunar Mars rover, extraterrestrial rover, uh, firsthand. And what they did is there's a bunch of um, 3D printed parts on that actual vehicle. Uh, there's some strut housings, there's some suspension parts, uh, internal parts, button switches, and you know just a little. This is just a little interesting fact that you know NASA actually tested the FDM technology at zero gravity 
because if you're out in deep space and something breaks or you need to have a knob or something needs repairing, you can't just call FedEx, not yet at least. So, you know, they have a printer there where they'll be able to print out uh, replacement parts in space. So I thought that was really interesting. But more things grounded on Earth is we have a lot of helicopter uh, companies, both OEMs and actual company er, and the companies that actually make the helicopters, and some uh, some air uh, some sorry some plane companies that make airplanes, both big and small, that actually use FDM on board the airplanes. And you can imagine one of the big applications for this is vents uh, to manufacture some kind of vent. Uh, especially a complex event that has to sit in a very tight space uh, that's kind of very organic and moves around. You know, to, to have that made is really expensive. We have companies now that are just printing them, and they're putting uh, the actual printed parts on aircraft and uh, having just great success with it in general. It's, it's, it's really exciting. So the next thing is assembly components. So, you know, when I th say assembly, really I'm talking about both parts of that. Assembly as in assembling the parts, and assembly as uh, you have this assembly, and I'm going to put some parts, some FDM parts inside of the assembly. So the one on the left is is a little cradle that holds parts while they're being assembled. Um, if There's a little pocket in the middle that says screws that holds all the screws for it. You can take it apart, put it together. This holds everything in one place. This is a really good tool. This goes back to that kind of lean manufacturing I was talking about. You know, in your manufacturing process, you know, if you go back there and you see somebody kind of fumbling around or, or double side taping something to their desk while they're trying to assemble it, you know, that might be a really good application for some kind of fixture or something like that. Um, the one in the middle is an assembly. The housing is actually made from FDM. There's a lot of parts on there, the suspension parts that are actually made in the final uh, model of that unmanned vehicle. And then, you know, the S is just, you know, parts of your assembly. You know, if you if you have these these little parts that, you know, you're getting sourced out and it's taking weeks and weeks and weeks to get, you know, a plastic plate or a spacer or some kind of bushing, you know, you can print them out. You can print them out in mass on a, on a bigger machine or, you know, even on a smaller extent on one of the smaller machines. And, you know, it's you're all of a sudden the production is in your hands. You're going to be able to make as many or as little as you want. You know, there's no minimum orders. You know, you know, you're not waiting on somebody else's schedule to get your parts done. So down here, we're going to talk about bridge tooling. So some of you that may not be familiar with the term, what bridge tooling is is so you have your, you know, you've you've you have a concept. It's done. It's proven out. You've got investors. You're ready to go. You've ordered the injection mold. Let's say it's just one piece. You've got an injection mold. It's getting cut. It's going to take six weeks. Well, in that six weeks, there's people knocking on your door saying, hey, you know, I really want these parts. I'm waiting for these parts. What can we do to get some of these parts in our hand as soon as possible? Bridge tooling kind of bridges the gap between your final design and your final mold. Um, short run production, short run in injection molds, you know, actual end use parts. You know, you can print these parts out. You know, you can say, hey, listen, we're waiting for molds, but I'm going to get you parts as soon as possible. Um, it can bridge that gap in between you know that waiting time you can get parts in your customers hands faster and instead, instead of having to wait for those injection molded parts um, again you can do the actual injection molds you know you can probably print out a mold depending on the complexity of the mold obviously in a fraction of the time um, you know we're talking days instead of weeks to get a short run mold out and uh, end use parts you know clips things like that you know the last thing you would hate is to have this really great product that's this huge assembly and everything's great and you're holding up sending it out because the mold for one clip is held up at some shop somewhere and everything else is just sitting there and you're just waiting for that one part to come in to finish the assembly that's where this bridge tooling comes into play and I, I think we've all been there at least once in our career right just waiting for that one part so we can finish this thing up so that's another really great application for 3d printing so you know to it doesn't matter what process we're talking about or, you know, in that process, everything starts with an idea. And then, you know, we're in the business of making things, you know, we're all in the business of, you know, making actual tangible things that we can hold and use in our hands. So it goes from an idea all the way down to production. And what I talked about today was some of the ways, some of the specific applications 
for the Stratasys line of machines in that process, whether it's conceptual models for you know an idea or you're actually doing the design checking and things like that, uh, functional prototypes um, and such with the design series, and then all the way up to the production series. That's that bridge tooling I was just talking about and the production fixtures and the Ultem parts, things like that is the Fortis line of 3D printable. 3D printed parts. So real durable shop floor stuff all the way down to very delicate um, presentation models. You know, we have a machine that's going to fit uh, exactly what your needs are. And, you know, not only do we have the Stratasys line of machines, but at Go Engineer, we really pride ourselves on the wide range of, of products that we have. You know, really, we don't look at them as products that we offer. We look, I know it sounds a little cliched, but they really are solutions for you. You know, we have this suite of products that we have really put time and effort and research in to really get a flow of products that are going to help you from birth to earth with a product. You know, it's going to go from the beginning to the end of a, of a design phase, from designing the SolidWorks to simulation to doing the electrical part with Altium to machining it with CamWorks, and then filling in those gaps with our Stratasys line of, uh, of 3D printers. Uh, you know, like I talked about, conceptual models, uh, prototypes, all the way along the way. You know, we understand that the design process is very fluid and it changes and you know no two parts are go through the same process but really what we do is we does we uh, su we supply you guys with a good line of products to help in that whole process and for you guys to be successful because we really do honestly believe that our success really depends on on your success you know if you're successful and happy and and profitable and all that stuff we're going to be very happy too so you know that's why we have that full line of products and really what we do is we empower you as a company to really be innovative because when you're innovative you're making things and when you're making things you're happy and when you're happy you're productive so you know we really we really pride ourselves on our customer service we want to make sure that that every one of our customers um, is using the the all of our tools, no matter what they are, whether they're 3D printers or SolidWorks, that they're using those to the fullest extent that they can, and they know and they're knowledgeable and they're happy with those products. So that's it for today. So I just want to say thank you very much. And if you have any questions, please feel free give go give your local Go Engineer office a call. You can call the 800 number on your screen. Um, thank you very much, and I hope you have a really great day.